In the previous lectures, we have already uh, introduced the concept of NP completeness and uh, I have talked about the importance of NP complete problems or NP complete languages. In this lecture, I will now formally establish some of the NP complete languages systematically and uh, as I had mentioned that the first problem in the history which was observed that it is NP complete was satisfiable to problem it is so called uh, uh, Cook's theorem Stephen Cook he has established this theorem this result. So, I will be uh, proving this uh, Cook's theorem in the sequel. What we do although satisfiability problem was the first one to establish that it is NP complete. I will uh, take a classroom approach we will uh, systematically develop the proof, proof of that may not be the original the proof, but we will systematically develop using uh, the techniques and the approach that we had adopted uh, in this course and uh, give a uh, 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 give an elegant proof I mean uh, uh, a proof that it is very uh, quickly understandable based on the previous lectures we give in this uh, in these lectures on NP completeness. Let me just recall what is NP complete language what we have talked. A language L in sigma star is said to be an NP complete language if it is an NP language and you take any language in NP the class NP there is a polynomial time reduction from that language to L and also I have mentioned about you know establishing NP complete languages in this you know you look at if you are knowing an NP complete language say L dash and uh, to establish a language which is in NP as NP complete if you can get polynomial time reduction from that language L dash to L that is sufficient. Why? Because to L dash because if you take any L double dash an NP language from L dash uh, from L double dash to L dash you will have a polynomial time reduction because it is NP complete because L dash is NP complete and now from L dash to L if you have a polynomial time reduction you know the pro transitive property of this polynomial time reduction this reduction in polynomial time right this less than or equal to P what we are writing this relation this is a transitive thing. So, that you will have L double dash is reduced to L in polynomial time. This is you take an arbitrary L double dash in N P right. So, take an arbitrary L double dash in N P since L dash is N P complete you have this and since this is given you get the transitivity L double dash is, uh, is less than or equal to P L right. So, that every L NP language can be uh, reduced to L in polynomial time right. So, we have already discussed this theorem, but anyway I wanted to just recall this. So, this is one that will be useful if you are already knowing an NP complete language because you see to establish a language is NP complete you have to observe that this is NP. And second thing what we have to observe is for every language in NP we have to give a polynomial time reduction to L. So, this is a hard uh, problem right. So, and the complex uh, and uh, you see we have to give such a polynomial time reduction from every language to the considered language L. So, instead what can be done if you are already knowing a language is NP complete then you can establish a new language if you uh, NP complete by giving a polynomial time reduction from 
that language to this. But observing one language is NP complete anyway requires all this you know uh, thing uh, to be looked into. Now, when we are talking about languages in NP to prove this thing, let me first give a criterion here. A language L or sigma an alphabet of size at least 2 and uh, assume dollar is not a symbol in sigma. Okay? Now, if there is a polynomially balanced language L dash in sigma star dollar sigma star. So, L dash how does an element in L dash look like that is every element is of the form x dollar y for x and y in sigma star. right? So, if you can have a polynomially balanced language L dash such that this L dash is in P right? this is there is a polynomial time deciding algorithm for L dash and this L is just you know a, co a coefficient of L dash with dollar sigma star. That means, in the language L dash the polynomially balanced language L dash if you just remove all the things from on and after dollar whatever is there if that is L then we can observe that this L is in N P. What exactly is this L dash? So, L dash what we are trying to give here after dollar because you know what is uh, what is uh, language in N P? A language is in N P if you have a polynomial time verifying uh, procedure polynomial time verification procedure for the language and given a certificate right so for the language l if you if you want to look at a language l if you want to see this is in np right so suppose these are the strings in l etc now any string you take if i give a certificate y and if there is a polynomial time procedure to verify this, but the how to give this certificate? This certificate we give non deterministically. So, that is why this NP you know this non deterministic uh, uh, Turing machine which verifies that x is in the language L or not in polynomial uh, I mean x is in the language in polynomial time. So, so given a string x in sigma star say L is a language in sigma star. Now, you given a string x in sigma star what do you require a non deterministic Turing machine you take x as the input and this non deterministic machine you know has to check whether uh, x is in L. Okay? So, if x is in L this non deterministic machine holds and the time it takes should be a polynomial time that is what is the definition. right? So, and alternatively you know I can uh, say like this if checking non deterministically means given a certificate say I will give that on the input itself. I give non deterministically a certificate a solution you know uh, this and then this x y if I have a polynomial time decision for this polynomial time decision for this then I can say the language L is in NP that is what is exactly we are trying to look at in this criterion. So, once again now here the y what you are we are taking the language l dash what we are creating that is a subset of sigma star dollar sigma star so what are the certificates we are going to give that we should be able to give in polynomial time with respect to the uh, string x so that is what is essentially the language is polynomially balanced the meaning of polynomially balanced language is exactly this. So, let me uh, look at that L dash in sigma star dollar sigma star is polynomially balanced. What is the meaning of that? Means there is a polynomial P such that x dollar y is in L dash then the length of y is less than or equal to P of mod x. That means, with respect to x you know the length of y is in a polynomial bound. So, that is a polynomially balanced language. Now, what is another point in the hypothesis this L dash the polynomially balanced language L dash is in P that is also given to us 
the meaning of this is there is a Turing machine m dash that decides L in a polynomial time. Let me say that is q time. Now, what I want to uh, look at that this L is in n p. Okay? So, to show L is in n p, I have to give a non deterministic machine which accepts L in a polynomial time. Right? Okay. Now, the following non deterministic uh, Turing machine that accepts L, what is L? L dash by dollar sigma star in non deterministic polynomial time. We are constructing it here. How do we construct? You just take the tape okay, and uh, the x is given as input to you right? from sigma star. To accept L, what I am going to do? First, you print a dollar here. So, that is what is this p dollar, this component of the Turing machine. And then here, non deterministically generate the possibilities of certificates. All right. So, this y it is from sigma star. So, if I assume sigma is a 1 a 2 a k, I have the possibilities of you know uh, printing a 1 or a 2 or and so on. Yes, so, I have here k loops printing uh, connecting to a printing machine printing a 1 or a 2. So, whatever is the certificate, I mean whatever is the string from sigma star, I should be able to generate following this loop, this particular portion of the uh, this thing Turing machine. Okay. And since this is non deterministic machine, you know whatever is you want, whatever is that you want, you can uh, print using these loops and then once you print a certificate y, you know you connect it to m double dash. Now, you ask me what is m double dash? Now, m double dash here, this is a simple variant of m dash because this m dash, you know because l dash is in p, we have a Turing machine m dash right, which decides l dash in polynomial time. Now, what I am doing this m double dash is just a simple variant of m dash which would loop forever when m dash holds with no, because m dash is an algorithm you know one when you give an input to that it will say yes or no. If it whenever it is saying no this variant m double dash will simply loops forever when it is not going to halt. In all other respects you know m double dash is just identical to m dash because whenever it is halting. Uh, by saying yes uh, in all other aspects. So, we will just leave it that way. So, that is what is m double dash. Now, you look at once again the Turing machine m. So, this m the Turing machine what we are doing in the beginning whatever is the input that you are taking x we first print the dollar non deterministically you, you will be able to print any string y from sigma star and then this input will be given this will input will be given to m double dash uh, where m double dash is simply m dash except that whenever this is saying no it is not going to halt it will go simply you know it will loop forever right so that you know the no case will not be accepted because we are constructing a non deterministic machine here so now you look at this x is in l if and only if there exists y in sigma star with you know length of y is less than or equal to p mod x because it is such that this x dollar y is in l dash because you see the language l is equal to l dash by dollar sigma star. Since l is equal to l dash by dollar sigma star whatever is x is in l you know you will be you will have some y with this kind of property. Now, you look at because this x dollar y is in uh, for some y this is in l dash there is an halting computation of m with no more than this many steps. Now, you look at how many steps you would require because to print dollar at the given position one step and then take a right move and uh, whatever is y that you want to print every time you will be taking a right move and print it all right and thus see whatever the length of y you know it is bounded by p mod x so uh, printing uh, that many two p mod x this many printing steps for that and then printing dollar is one step and finally you will be taking one more right move to go to this position right so printing dollar is one step going taking a right move one step here so that you know there are two steps here printing y which is of length maximum p mod x so that is 2 p mod x number of steps to print y two steps for this purpose what i have mentioned dollar and taking a right move there and once you have this input since the machine m m dash is taking the polynomial time q and now the what is the input size here this is mod y mod x plus 1 right and mod y is 
is less than or equal to p mod x. So, this is the total uh, now input length for m dash. So, now it is to m double dash. So, the, the that is the polynomial time with respect to q here. So, this is the this is the total number of steps that this machine takes and you see this is a polynomial because p is a polynomial q is a polynomial right with respect to the length of x what you are having this is you know uh, in a polynomial time. Hence, m accepts l in a non deterministic polynomial time t n where the function t is given by the expression 2 times p n plus 2 plus q times p n plus n plus 1 right this is the polynomial you compare with this and thus you can understand that l is in n p. Once again we look at the statement what are what we are trying to see here to observe a language is in n p if you can identify a polynomially balanced language polynomially balanced language is nothing else but you know given a certificate given a certificate which is which is within polynomial time you should be able to decide whether that uh, you know uh, is in p. So, this with this criterion we can cross check the lang the given language is in n p all right and here is a, a small remark, but of course very interesting that converse of this statement in the above result is also true. What is the meaning of that? If you take a language L in N p, you will be able to identify a polynomially balanced language L dash in which is a subset of sigma star dollar sigma star such that L dash is in p and the given language L which is in N p is, is equal to L dash by dollar sigma star. So, we will be uh, able to identify a polynomially balanced language L dash always. So, polynomially balanced language means the one which satisfies this criteria right. So, this is also true that is this there exists a polynomially balanced language L dash contained in sigma star dollar sigma star such that L is in P and L is equal to L dash by dollar sigma star right. You can try this as an exercise because what is the language L dash that you wanted to identify right. So, a simple hint can be you know whatever the certificate whatever the certificate uh, corresponding to the given uh, uh, input you have to append those certificates right. When you are creating this L dash when it is in N p you know you are non deterministically accepting it non deterministically accepting in a polynomial time. Now, when you want to have a polynomially balanced language this L dash how do we construct? next to the input x you have to give a certificate y right and this y length should not be more than you know some polynomial p mod x the length of x. So, that kind of language we have to identify. So, this is in fact you can use the what is called uh, the uh, uh, computation history of this machine uh, the machine corresponding to l you can make use of that and you can create the certificate right this is a hint here you can try this as an exercise. Now, to prove to establish a language n p complete you see we have two conditions one is to observe that the language is in n p and the other is you take any language in n p you have to give a polynomial time reduction to the language what you are targeting to show that is n p complete. For both the things I have mentioned like you know what is the approach that we will be following this is a necessary and sufficient condition corresponding to n p to observe that language in n p and thus more or less you know you can uh, consider this technique and understand that a language is in n p. So, you have to essentially give certificate in a polynomial time and verify in polynomial time that that uh, the string is in uh, language L dash or not ok. And second thing is if you have already established some languages in uh, uh, a language is NP complete, then we know that you just give from that language to the targeted language a polynomial time reduction. These two things I have just mentioned. Now, what do we do? Anyway, first we have to establish some language is NP complete, then that kind of reduction just single reduction will be sufficient. How do we do that? What is the approach? Now, again you look back when we are talking about undecidability, we have first established that halting problem is undecidable, right. So, once we have established the halting problem is undecidable using the halting problem we have reduced many other languages to show that they are undecidable language. So, in this course particularly if you just look at whenever we wanted to show some language is undecidable 
either directly from halting problem or some variants of the halting problem or you know whatever that we have already established they are undecidable from there you know we started reducing the targeted problem right and establish that they are undecidable. Here also we will go in a uh, in a similar approach what do we consider an a variant of halting problem in the present context. What is a halting problem? Halting problem asks you to uh, verify I mean uh, to decide whether given a Turing machine m and an input string w whether m halts on w uh, there is an algorithm for that. So, that decision problem you know we have observed that it is undecidable all right that is an unsolvable problem. Now, a variant of that in the present context means what do we consider in place of a Turing mission I consider it a non deterministic Turing mission. So, now you see the system is going even more complex and so the question is not the question is not you know given a non deterministic Turing mission and input string w whether m halts on uh, uh, w it is not it is not the question because even considering a standard Turing mission you know the problem is undecidable. So, when I am looking at this of course, I ask you I give you some other parameter that what is the time the what is that time parameter that means, I ask you to see whether this m accepts w the non deterministic machine m accepts w in so many steps I give you a fixed number of steps uh, corresponding to give a Turing machine and a string and I ask you this question. Now, this is the first language this is I can call it as a non deterministic uh, quantitative analogous problem to the halting problem. So, such a variant we consider and I will establish first that this problem is NP complete through I mean whatever the definition we give. So, uh, we will verify both the conditions and establish that this particular problem is NP complete. For a halting problem we would have written H, H naught or whatever right halting problem. Similarly, here since it is non deterministic mission let me start writing N naught the problem right. Let us look at this problem. This is a variant of halting problem for non deterministic Turing mission which includes time parameter. Formally the language when I am looking at you see we are considering a non deterministic mission M and a string input string W. Of course, we are considering the encoding of that because I am giving you a language and then of course, this ampersand symbol that at the right 1 t that means, you know this is the uh, time that this many steps because we are giving this in the unit representation you know that m and w we would have given that using the alphabet 0 and 1 you know that we have considered uh, an encoding of a Turing machine using a sequence of zeros and ones. Similarly, a non deterministic machine also you just encode it the given input and m. So, this is encoding of that and then this separator uh, tells you after this what are the so many ones I am giving that is the number of steps that I am expecting uh, that m should accept w in that many steps all right. So, this problem n naught is what uh, given a non deterministic to remission m and a string w whether m accepts w in t or fewer steps. So, formally we write a language con concerning that is this way. So, we prove that this language is NP complete ok. To show the language is NP complete N naught I give you a polynomially balanced language N naught dash and uh, observe that this is in uh, P and moreover this N naught dash quotient with dollar sigma star whatever is the underlying alphabet of course, is N naught. So, that is how we, we consider this N naught dash you look at this how do we define. So, define the language N naught prime N naught is what is that what we are going to give this M w the t the time of course, 1 power t we write that means, so many ones right the with respect to time. Now, the, doll, uh, the dollar is a separator for the certificate and what is the certificate we I am going to give here is encoded configurations of m on w you look at. So, all this c naught c 1 c t dash this, is this string which satisfies you know the following 5 uh, uh, statements what is that m is an NTM non deterministic Turing machine q sigma delta q naught and w is an input. And what are the CIs? CIs are configurations of M for all these CIs and C naught is the initial configuration of M with W as input that is what is written this way right. 
So, q naught blank w blank. So, this is what our initial uh, configuration and uh, the C t dash is a halting configuration. That means, you are in a halting you are in the halting state h and with something on the tape that x a y for some x and y in sigma star a in sigma right. The current reading symbol is a and moreover what is the sequence c i uh, c naught c 1 and so on with from c naught in one step you are getting c 1 from c 1 you are getting in one step c 2 and so on. So, c i gives c a plus 1 in m in one step for all this. And then the number of steps here the number of configurations that I am writing it here the number of steps here the t dash is less than or equal to t whatever is that number t we are given. So, let us consider this language. Now, you look at right once again what we are what is the certificate we are going to give? We are giving the computation history of m on w and we are considering all possible configurations configurations which leads to a halting configuration from the initial configuration within you know t steps that is what we are considering in this language. This exactly gives you the hint of the exercise I have I had given you right this kind of thing you consider and then you can observe that for the converse of the previous result right. Okay. Now, you look at this n naught dash is a polynomially balanced language and is in p. Okay. How do we say that? Why this is polynomially balanced? Because any string you consider here as of the form x dollar y is in this n naught dash. What is x here? It, this encoding of m and w at the rate 1 t. So, that is what is x. Now, x dollar y is in n, n dash then what do we require what is the condition the length of y should be less than or equal to some polynomial time the, the polynomial uh, of uh, the length of x. Now, you look at these configurations how many configurations we have t number of configurations. How I am going to encode the configurations you encode appropriately like you know the Turing machine the transitions are encoded as blocks of zeros and ones and similarly you know in a configuration you know that there is a state component and the input that is what is essentially a configuration and always the input w it changes what say for example, w a 1 a 2 a n in each step what an increment of at most one symbol right a symbol like if I go towards and I may increase by one more symbol right if it is the case. So, in each step either you are going to take a right move you know or making a printing step. So, each step with respect to w you know I am not making any uh, larger change as far as the uh, configuration this thing concerned the length length of the uh, tape concerned right. And then you see these transitions from with respect to this. So, a state component is there if you look at a configuration a state component is there and the input. So, w is the input and the, the, the change what you are going to have whatever is the way that you encode each symbol you know this is with respect to uh, with respect to the w the c naught is in a, within a polynomial time uh, with respect to what is called uh, the length of x because the entire thing as x we have. And uh, how many such configurations that we are going to give we are going to give configurations which are less than or equal to uh, t the number of configurations. So, since this parameter t is part of x you see this configuration let me say each configuration with respect to w is of maximum say k length all right and now you have k t dash okay k t dash this I am I am once again reemphasizing that this configuration with respect to w I would have maybe okay let me put a parameter this is k mod w suppose this is how when you have encoded which is coming up and then since t is already a parameter inside the x you see I am taking t dash steps. So, this is also with respect to that a polynomial uh, times okay. and thus whatever is the certificate we are going to give here that means x dollar y is in n naught dash then the length of y what we are going to give the certificate it is less than or equal to 
uh, you know with respect to the input input that x it is a polynomial uh, it is a polynomial bound okay, with respect to the parameter mod x. So, this is therefore, polynomially balanced and it is in p also. Why this is in p? Because everything is available now. Only thing what I have to verify you know once I have printed this certificate that this is a non deterministic Turing machine W is in sigma star. So, these are the things that you have to look at and then since these are the configurations of m you have to just cross check that once this C naught is of this form this C naught whether you are going to get C 1 or not. How do we know this that is from the machine m because the transitions of m are also available. So, C naught to C 1 whether you are going to get or not you have to see C 1 to C 2 you are getting or not you have to see and so on C t dash this is the step that you have to verify. So, on this input when I am going from C naught to C 1 I have to carefully verify whether this is following the transitions of m or not that is what I have to cross check and if this C naught is the initial configuration and C t dash is a halting configuration that way and the number of the number of such configurations whether they are less than or equal to t or not. So, all these conditions that we have to verify for x dollar y the string which is in n naught dash alright. So, you can do this in polynomial time because this is just you have to go back and forth on this uh, uh, that how many times because the number of transitions that you have to verify here alright. So, you can observe carefully you can give little more details okay, and observe this n naught dash is a polynomially balanced language and is in p and moreover here the way that we have constructed is n naught is n naught prime by dollar 0 1 star I am writing 0 1 star here with the assumption that I am encoding these configurations using the sequence of 0s and 1s again right like the way we have encoded a Turing machine. So, dollar 0 1 star that is what is n naught. So, this will be in p because once this is a polynomially balanced language in p I will use that result and observe that this n naught is a language in n p all right. So, the language n naught we have observed that this is in n p using that result. Now, the second thing what I have to observe you take any language in n p I have to give a polynomial time reduction to n naught right that means I have to show this l is less than or equal to p n naught ok. Let us see how do we do that. Since L is in NP, there is a non deterministic Turing machine ML and a polynomial PL such that ML accepts L, right. This is the definition of NP language, alright, accepts L, of course, in non deterministic time PL because the polynomial PL for a non deterministic machine we say this is a non deterministic time, right. So, this is the definition. Now, what do I do? I give you a polynomial time reduction here. So, reduction means what I have to do? I have to give a Turing computable function that reduces L to n naught. I have to give a Turing computable function which reduces L to n naught and that computable function we should be uh, that reduction should happen in a polynomial time. These two things that I have to look at. Okay. How do we do that? I define the function f l from sigma star to 0 1 at the rate star because the encoding of uh, Turing machines that we are doing with 0 and 1 and anyway uh, we are separating uh, the time with respect to this at the rate symbol. So, therefore, these three are taken into count all right and now how do I define that you take any string w in sigma star first I simply print m l because m l is is in my hand right. So, for L there is corresponding non deterministic Turing machine ML. So, there is a constant that is with me. So, I print ML encoding of that and whatever is the W that you are giving me the same W you know encoded. So, this this pair we consider encoded and then what is the time I give associated to this is because this ML accepts W in non deterministic polynomial time P L I just give that much time the time here is p l of mod w right. So, this is the time we are associating to this. 
Now, let us look at this F L. Can we uh, prepare this? So, given W as input to a Turing machine, okay, a Turing machine you give, can we create such an output in polynomial time with respect to the length of W? You look at what we have to do here. What I have to essentially do is I have to print the encode of ML. Okay, you can consider maybe two tape Turing machine for the uh, uh, time being. Okay, say I will just print. This is a constant one, right? I have printed encoding of this. Then the W encoding you will also print because W is available here. So now this ML for every string, this is always constant. This W corresponding to that I have to print. Okay. So this is say for example printing ML for any W say for example k number of steps, and now this W you encode it for example you know depending on the type of coding that you have for each symbol that is with respect to length of W you will have some polynomial right say some polynomial times length of W that is how you will be coding this and after this what I have to do I have to print so many ones which are you know how many ones I have to print P L mod W this is what I have to print you see clearly P L is a polynomial I have to print that many ones so, the, so that means printing that many ones means twice P L mod W steps you would require, right? So, some constant number of steps to print the encoding of M L and then some polynomial you know bound with respect to mod W to print the encoding of W and thereafter I have to print at the rate symbol that means again two steps there okay? and then to print this many ones I have to take this many steps. You look at this is a polynomial, P L is a polynomial, P is a polynomial, this K is a constant. So, thus you can see this can be this can be done in polynomial time and this you can manage using a Turing machine. What is the meaning of that? This F L the function F L given W on the tape of a Turing machine you know to creating this F L W that you can manage using a Turing machine in polynomial time that, that means this F L is a Turing computable function and can be computed in a polynomial time alright. So, now, now you observe the W is in L if and only if this F L W is in N naught. Okay. So, a string W is in L then F L W is in N naught because there this will be accepting that is what is exactly this since L is in N P there is a non-deterministic Turing machine M L you know that accepts L in non-deterministic polynomial time P L. right? So, this F L W is in N naught and whatever is that we have created here if this is in N naught then W has to be you know that W is accepted by M L in non deterministic time P L. So, W is in L. So, we have this situation and that means what this is this is a Turing computable function and you are computing this in polynomial time moreover this condition is also satisfied that means this F L is a polynomial time reduction from L to N naught. That means, L is less than or equal to P N naught. Now, what is L? L is an arbitrary language in N P. So, you take any arbitrary language in N P, this procedure it is a very elegant simple procedure you see that can be uh, that L can be re reduced to N naught in polynomial time. So, what is that? So, this is the second condition for N P complete uh, to establish a language is N P complete. So, combining these two now we can conclude that N naught is N P complete. All right. So, if you look at you know uh, the way that we have handled this undecidability, I mean certain languages are undecidable. We have started with halting problem. Now, an analogous problem of that halting problem that we have introduced and established that it is N P complete. Now, as an exercise, what we have done there, you know, uh, certain variants of halting problem that we have considered. So, those variants that you could establish that they are undecidable. How did we do that? So, halt from the halting problem you have reduced it to those variants. So, halting problem uh, you give a polynomial uh, uh, sorry uh, you give a uh, reduction to the targeted problem that are variants. Right? Here what we are going to do the reduction we have to verify that it is polynomial time. So, this polynomial time reduction is required here. Okay. So, now I give you 
such similar uh, exercise you look at given a non deterministic Turing machine M whether M holds in T stats when started on a blank tape. So, this kind of problem we have considered in the undecidability also given a Turing machine M whether M holds when you start that in a blank tape. Now, an analogous problem here what is that I give you a non deterministic Turing machine M and of course, the time parameter also. So, it is a T in T steps whether you know M holds when you start that machine in a, in a blank tape. So, how do I write the corresponding language say let me call it as N 1 encoding of m and the time i am separating that by at the right symbol right so this is this is this is the uh, string where m is a non deterministic machine and when you start this on the blank tape that means this is the initial configuration right and in t dash steps it will halt with something on the tape that x a y for some x and y in sigma star a is sigma and this t this this t dash should be less than or equal to. so within t steps. So, I am just writing t dash that means within t steps all right. We can observe that again n 1 is also n p complete. You see if you look at the history of n p complete uh, problems you know there are very important problems several uh, you know addition problems concerning certain optimization problems all those things that we are going to discuss. But you look at for the classroom concerned you look at such, such a nice simple languages that anyone can sit and establish that they are NP complete. And the approach is also you know what you have practice the reductions in undecidability. So, what I what you have to do here first you have to establish that N 1 is in NP right that is an NP language. And then now since we are already knowing that N naught is NP complete you can make use of you know that N naught means now it is sufficient to give a polynomial time reduction say from n naught to n 1. Okay. So, you can target to do this as an exercise to establish that this is n p complete. Regarding polynomial time reduction uh, from n naught to n 1, I give you a small hint uh, here. So, that you know you can complete uh, this problem by showing that uh, uh, there is a polynomial time reduction from n 0 to n 1. So, that n 1 is uh, n p complete. What do I suggest? You look at in n 0 what do we have in n 0 we have you know a co encoding of non deterministic machine and a string and then you know uh, the respective number of steps within that you wanted to pursue. Okay. So, and corresponding to this what we have to assign we have to assign a non deterministic Turing machine which when you start an empty tape it has to finalize uh, uh, finalize uh, whether this is in n 1 within the given uh, number of steps. What do we suggest here you take a string because the encodings I am just assuming we will be able to make with 0 1 here because as earlier in the Turing machines what we are writing this at the right symbol is extra that we are using just to separate between the Turing machine code and the time. Okay. So, now you take a string x in this 0 1 at the rate this star take any x if that is of the form some non deterministic Turing machine m and a string w input string w and sometime uh, this at the rate on power t if this is not of this form then you simply assign some same, uh, some uh, string which is not in uh, you know in n 1 from this. Okay. In n 1 we know that at least at one once at the right symbol has to come when I assign some 1 or whatever it is not clearly in n 1. So, what I am doing if a if a string if a string x is not of this form that uh, m w at the rate 1 power t then I will simply assign some string which cannot be in uh, n 1. And if that is of the form then what do we do so for some non deterministic Turing mission m w all this. I will assign this string I will tell you how what is this string. This what do I suggest you construct you take a Turing machine non deterministic Turing machine m dash okay. what we what is our desired intention because when you start an empty tape in given number of steps whether this will halt or not that is what is our uh, uh, this thing question. So, you simply from the current cell because you are starting on the empty blank tape. So, in the current cell 
you take a right move and print a 1 here and take a right move print a 2 here and so on a n what is this a 1 a 2 a n that is the string w because this is x is of the form m w form ok m w at the rate on power t what do I suggest first you print the string a 1 a 2 a n and take a right move. So, now the reading and writing at position is this. So, this part this part can be managed by this portion of this m dash and then simply you connect to the mission m. So, if you consider this non deterministic Turing mission m dash what exactly we are doing whatever is the part of uh, the input w that you will first prepare it on the tape and then connect it to m. Now, to prepare this string how much time you would require the length of x length of this w of course, this is w uh, and uh, you know a plus one more step essentially. So, uh, 2 mod w plus 1 steps that this will take ok, Few, uh, 2 mod w plus 1 steps this will take to prepare this a 1 a 2 a n and then when you start m here this will pursue this input with, within uh, uh, within this t time or not that is what we have to cross. So, the total time we are giving here is 1 t plus 2 mod w plus 1 time. Suppose, if you give this now you can observe that whenever this is in uh, uh, whenever this m w at the rate on uh, 1 t is in n naught if and only if you know the uh, f of x. So, whenever x is that means x is in n naught if and only if you can see f of x is in n 1 and you can observe that this reduction is in uh, a polynomial time because you can look at with respect to the input size how much this is coming in. Okay. So, with this hint you know with this kind of function I can uh, uh, ask you to uh, complete this exercise that uh, to show that n 1 is n p complete.